All right, so uh, let me go over this real quick. So the, what we try to do, uh, we're coming out of an FZR, a full retracement zone. So let me get this out of the way. Let's look at the entire session so far on price. This is your main chart to trade off of. This is our main chart. All right, this algorithm will fire these arrows automatically. So um, all you traders are going to get an update on this with the algorithm uh, also that fires these arrows automatically, and you can uh, use automated trading with this, uh, or you can use manual trading with this, depending on how you want to do it. But this is our main chart. You know, we use. I, I have a different spin on the Unirinko bars. We use a standard uh, Ninja Unirinko bar, but I use a 12020. Um, you don't see this uh, anywhere. This is where I came up with doing uh, different uh, markets, and I found this is a very neat chart that picks up these zones very well. So I use a 12020. This is our main chart to look for trades off of because this is the uh, longest chart that I show in the room on the ES. So you can see that when you get these inflection points, uh, the arrow fired here, it'll fire automatically when there's it's at the zone or inside the zone. If it's an FCR, if it's a momentum play, it will fire. I'll show you in a second. But these arrows will fire automatically on your software. So what this means is you have a possible inflection point where you have a possible move up. And what you'll want to see is you'll want to see a buy imbalance on this chart or a sell imbalance at the key zone. So we have three zones. The zone I show in the room is the intermediate zone, is this zone. So if price action is going to continue to the upside or downside, you'll want to stay above this intermediate zone that I show in that 12020. You want to stay right above this zone. If you violate this zone and you start closing below the zone and you don't get a buy imbalance, you can see this big green uh, box. This means this is a buy imbalance and the market should reverse outside that zone and we should crank to the upside, which we did. Here's a buy imbalance inside the zone this morning when the arrow came up. We had a buy imbalance and it cranked up. So vice versa, if you had a sell imbalance, we had some sell imbalances yesterday. Well, here's a buy imbalance. See how it stays right above my intermediate zone? The market should reverse, and I don't care what market you look at. These zones are very, very accurate. Um, it doesn't matter what market you look at. You use the, the, the Dow, the uh, Russell 2000, the NASDAQ futures. Uh, I had a NASDAQ futures trade here this morning with ADP. I'll show you in a second. But this should reverse. This should come down to the intermediate zone, and we should reverse because this is a key zone in the market. Uh, so what was notorious for coming down to either to the shallow or to the deep zone and getting a nice reversal. So we at least got to come at the zone. You know, this is too far away from the zone to see a, this had a buy imbalance right back to a sell imbalance. Uh, you want to come at the zone. The best zone you're going to trade off is this middle zone. This one you see a lot of nice trades far off that middle zone. Okay, so if you see a sell imbalance will look like this. A sell imbalance will look like this where there's a big sell imbalance in the market and if it's, if it's at a key support or resistance. So yesterday uh, we've had several uh, uh, sell imbalances, buy imbalances with the, uh, that matched up with the zones. So that is what this chart is. I put in the corner of our main zone, our main uh, chart here. So what I like to see is I like to see us come inside of the zone like it does and then I like to see a buy imbalance right at the zone. So I like to come down to it, and I like to see this buy imbalance uh, at the zone and get cranking um, to the upside or downside. So <clears throat> that's what I use this chart. Now, I'll go over this tonight in the conference call, how it matches up. But I use a little bit different spin on this where um, I, use, um, I use a 1120 for my reverses reversals to pop the to buy and sell zones I mean uh, um, uh, to pop the uh, uh, imbalances so you can really see the imbalances using a 1120 so this is a 12020 I use for the zones and then um, like I said here's the whole trading day so far we've had three opportunities on the S&P uh, 
this is an FZR, FZR, FZR. And FZR just means we have a full retracement at the zone looking for a continuation. So what we'll do is we'll look for this market to get down into this zone, and then we'll look for a buy imbalance inside of that zone uh, with an arrow needs a fire. Now, a, a lot of traders ask, well, if I get the if I get the sell imbalance and buy a balance, do I wait for the arrow then? You got to have the arrow that fires because the arrow has all the uh, uh, ingredients in it that, that lets you know that's confirmation is reversing. So what you want to see is this. You want to see it not only give a buy and balance like it did this morning. At the, on here, here's a buy and balance. You'll want the arrow to fire. Uh, you want the arrow to fire um, for you as far as that goes. And, and like I said, the opposite will be uh, the opposite will be in the case of a um, the opposite will be in case of a sell, be a red sell bounce. As you can see, the market's coming down to my zone again. Uh, we don't have a buy imbalance at all. We have no arrow. There's no possible trade. Um, a lot of traders ask, well, what what are these lines on here? Uh, this is my supply demand lines. This is where previous support and resistance came in the market. They automatically plot for uh, traders that have the software. And it just says, if you get long here, if you're long at this level, so you're long at uh, 39.71 is when the arrow printed. So 39.70 when the arrow printed, it says you better scale contracts at 77.5 because there's major resistance at 77.5 from this previous high. There's an order flow at this previous high. And it's saying that you better scale. So if you are in at 71 from my automated arrow that fired up, uh, then you're telling you the supply line saying, hey, there's overhead supply here. And this is generated from this big sell imbalance that came up here this morning. And then it came yesterday also. Um, you had a big sell imbalance here that really caused the market. Uh, this is where we got the big sell imbalance right here to fire off at my supply line. It really sold off on my supply. Um, some of you caught this yesterday, I saw in the room, um, that big sell imbalance, where was it, right here. So it caught my supply line, it hit my supply line, had a big sell imbalance, and the market just got cranked. I mean, 39.78, it just fell right through the, uh, the floor. So then it came up down to my, uh, my zone, it had to buy imbalance, and we started moving back up. So you can use this chart, you can see that, we're holding the middle zone still, which is good. That means the market technically is still in an uptrend. If, if, if you get outside, if you get outside of this lower zone, the market's in trouble for a trend change. And then we sort of got to reverse gears. So if I get outside, so we've been technically moving up right here. here here's a buy and balance again off the zone. So the market's been moving up away from the zone. So when you get outside my outer zone here, this is a trend change. You're look for the first breakdown retracement short, and it should flip here on my zone. My zone should turn red also. See, you can see yesterday we had a lot of sell zones. We had a lot of sell zones that sell arrows yesterday because it was in a downtrend. Sell, 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 and then Right when we broke through the um, the green um, ATR, uh, not ATR, but the uh, the zone, um, we started printing red zones, and then we had a lot of arrows on the smaller time frame. So that's what you want to see. If you flip, if you flip below this zone here this morning, and we flip to red, we're going to have to reverse gears and look start looking for sell setups. And that's what we'll do. We'll look for sell setups uh, once we uh, flip to the other side. And we do that on this longer time frame, you're good to go. Now, if you look at, um, if I skimming this down, if I get above 77 and a half, and this, th these were these supply demand lines really help out. So I know my trading plan today is this. These are these are static, by the way. These are not. Um, these are not. Um, these are not. Uh, they don't move with price. Meaning this resistance that called this high up here this morning at 77 and a half 78 that is static from here it caught this order flow a lot of big sell imbalances came in there so and back here so projected this forward for you so just like here 60 60 is support and then 51 
But look below 51 and look above 4,375. This is where you see the market go crazy vertical. And this is where you see great FCRs and beautiful Momo trades. If you look at all these trades that come up on these FCRs where the S&P cranks down 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 points, NASDAQ the same way, it's because you're getting out of supply or you're getting below demand. And once you get below, because see, this demand line is registering there was support here at this level, buy imbalance. There's a support level on this buy imbalance. So once I get below 51 and I keep coming down and, and my zones are printing shorts and I come up inside the zone, I get a sell imbalance, look to crank short, vice versa. If I get outside of today of 4,375, look to crank long. In the shorter term, let's bring it up a little bit so you see. Then if I get above 77 and a half, look for the first retracement FZR inside the zone or look for a Momo trade to 95. I've got about, what, 15, 16, 17, 18 point potential to the upside. If I get below 60 support, I got down to 51. I got nine S&P points looking for an FZR short or in a Momo trade. But if I get outside these zones, and, I'm, and we all know this, this is where the markets go vertical. And they like to move fast. And we all want to participate in vertical markets. That's where you have no support below you, no resistance above you, according to previous price action. This, this software is based upon order flow, strictly order flow. So you can see that my levels, I get below 51 a quarter, market's in trouble. If I get below 43 and three quarters, it should set higher highs. If we get below 51 a quarter, this thing should crank lower fast and furious. So that is something for us to watch for. I keep that on my long-term chart only. You can see I'm, I'm printing red uh, zones now. So I'm printing red zones. So that means if I break 60, I'm going to look for the first momentum set up on a retracement. I'm going to look for the first FZR retracement also with an arrow to fire short if I get below that. So that's what I'm watching for in the S&P this morning. This is our main chart to trade off. I cannot express enough. The 12020, it will call these swings. Okay? Now what I'm going to show you tonight is I'm going to show you I have uh, longer time frames. This is my NASDAQ futures I just went short on. Uh, so this you can use longer uh, longer Rinko bars to find inflection points on these markets. Now, this is the NASDAQ futures, but I'm looking for a setup on the S&P on the longer time frames also. I'm going to show you how you can use longer time frames to find big inflection points. And these are not small inflection points. This is a, a, a 40, this is a live fill that happened just a second ago, 46 and three quarters, four contracts short, got down to 36 and three quarters. Uh, you know, that's a 10 point uh, S &P, or NASDAQ future hit or 40 ticks. Uh, the arrow fire automatically right there. I'm going to show you how you can use these arrows off larger time frames. Yeah, Bob, I'll answer your question in one sec, bud. So in the conference call tonight, I'm going to show you how you can use these time frames for larger ones to find out big inflection points. I'm still looking for one on the S&P right now for larger time frame. Uh, yesterday, it caught that big inflection point down at 11.03. 11.03 is where we had that huge massive sell-off uh, right here. Um, and the day before, it caught that massive sell-off here also at around, what time that was, at around noon. Um, I'm going to show you how, I, I think the problem with traders, they get so focused on the small time frames, they, they, they don't get a, um, a real feel for the big picture. So I'm going to show you uh, off the, um, in a call tonight, um, in the conference call, how we can use larger time frames to, to see when the push is. Because a push started in the S&P, and I'll show you why. You can use larger time frames to trade off smaller time frames. So let's say you want to use my uh, auto my auto trader to, to signal these uh, for you. Not even getting in, per se, on your account, because let's say you don't like using auto trades to get in, automatic trading, but to signal you when the market's trying to roll over. So it comes up to my red ATR sell zone, and this is my zone. And we, we get a sell signal here, and the market starts rolling over at 67 and three quarters. 
you can use that information to trade off smaller time frames. So the smallest time frame that I have in the room, here's my larger time frame that just fired this trade here off the NASDAQ futures, but let's say that this big hit yesterday was here, right? So we have this big sell imbalance right here, 1103. This is where my auto got short off the larger time frame. It got short right in there to catch this move. And so how can we capture this on a smaller time frame then? How can we capture this move? because it's showing we broke through my zone. That's saying we've got to shift gears, we're shorting the market, right? My algo picks it up. It says we're shorting the market, right? So if you don't want to trade off a larger time frame like this, which I'll show you how to do tonight, um, then how can we, so if you trade off a larger time frame like this, it's showing big inflection points, big inflection point, 10, big inflection point. Big, in the last three days, big inflection point. So if I fire this off the larger time frame, then how can I get on the smaller time frame? So let's look at 11 o'clock yesterday on a smaller time frame. And that brings me to this chart next to me. And that's why I want to show you guys. So this is our large main chart that we're looking for signals. We haven't got no signal yet. We had a buy, buy, buy since midnight. We're looking for it to retrace and get a sell signal now. We know if we break through 60, break, retest. I like to do an ABC short, break, retest, 60, sell and balance to bring us down to 51 a quarter. We break that 51 a quarter, this market could just get crumbled to the downside. So I'm watching for that. But let's look at the smaller time frame. So I have this 120.20 in the room like this. But also on this chart over here, I have a smaller time frame. Why? A smaller time frame to show you if the larger time frame breaks down, and you don't want large stops, it can show you how you can pull yourself in on a smaller time frame. So when I saw it breaking down yesterday at 11 o'clock, here, this is when the algo got short in the larger time frame, it showed on the larger 120.20, right? This is where we start breaking down. You can see the momentum setups are on the smaller time frame. So what I show in the room, I show a smaller time frame. I show an Uni Rinko 113.13. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, if you trade off a small time frame by itself, you'll get stopped out a lot. It's not conducive to a great trading plan. So you want to look at the macro point of view and break it down to the micro point of view. So if you want smaller stops, that's fine. And you want to enter off a smaller time frame, fine. But everything has to be set up by the larger time frame. And if you don't let the larger time frame come into an FCR zone or set up a momentum setup, then you can't check down to a smaller time frame. This time frame is absolutely worthless to me. It means nothing to me unless I'm set up by a larger time frame. So this time frame has to set me up because it's a big picture. Or if I use the larger time frame of the big algo, I'll show you how to use that tonight, then if it goes short at 39.67, then I want to try to short the smaller time frame anywhere in between where the algo is going short. I want to short anywhere in here. Or I want to short anywhere in here. And these are big moves, these are not small moves. This is 39.89.50 all the way to the swing low of 39.60. So you're talking about 30 S&P points or 90 ticks. So between those 90 ticks is short. Your macro point of view is saying short. Your macro point of view is saying short here. Your macro point of view is saying short here, short here. So in these subsections of us going short, you'll want to, if you want to trade off a smaller time frame, you can, right? Because right now my larger time frame is saying we're short now also. We're rolling over. So it's saying short, right? So if you want to trade off a smaller time frame, you can. But you want to see an arrow that fires. Now, there's two things you want to look for then. So here's where the market broke down yesterday off the larger time frame. It broke down. Here's a Momo setup. Now, the Momo setup means this oscillator does not get above 80. The, the best case scenario is this oscillator does not get above 20 because that's called an extreme MOMO. That means momentum is really coming hard into the market on the S&P or the NASDAQ futures or Dow or whatever you trade. This is a huge inflection point. You should be smiling ear to ear because you have a tweezer sell. Now what a tweezer is is when you get two dojis back to back on my smaller time frame or larger time frames and the arrow fires right after the tweezer because you're in a momentum setup with the tweezer. This is one of the most powerful setups you're going to see in the room 
after the large time frame breaks down or breaks out on or changes direction. A tweezer just means you have two dojis with the arrow that fires right afterwards. So this arrow automatically fired in the room yesterday. So your live short would be below this bar of 39.58 and three quarters. So we'll look for this today. If we break through supply demand, which I just showed you the big inflection points, I'm going to look for a Momo trade. So this is a momentum trade because the oscillator, once it broke down on my large time frame over here or my uh, automated algorithm, then you want to look for a momentum. Now you can trade off the smaller time frame because this is a 113.13. So I can get away with a smaller stop above a swing high. So now I'm looking for, I have a smaller stop on a Momo trade momentum trade because the oscillator does not get above 20. That's an extreme momentum short. Remember, Momo trade, it cannot get above 80. 80. It's got to stay below 80. The best if it stays below 20 because that's an extreme Momo. There's your entry. But you can see you can use the, you can use a smaller time frame to fire in these trades after the large time frame breaks down or breaks out. And that's what we can do. We can use, that's why I have this chart over here, this small chart for you guys to look at, because it lets you see when, off of a larger time frame, when we're breaking down, when you got sell setups on a smaller time frame. Now, I would not trade off the smaller time frame, like I said, at all, until you're structurally breaking down on a trend change, or you're breaking down through a supply demand line. So if we break through here, the demand of 39.60, I'm looking for that smaller time frame to get up to my zone FZR or a momentum trade, retest it, and tank all the way down from 60 down to 51. All right, you can see right now, you see how it's rolling, see the arrow automatically fired off my small time frame. I had a sell imbalance into a buy imbalance. That's telling me it's catching the rolling position traders. That means it's short the market because the larger structure is breaking down. So your, your, your larger time frame is breaking down, right? We're breaking down because we had a trend change, and then the first retrace in the smaller time frame to fire in the trade. So that's a, the only reason I use this smaller time frame chart, is when the structure of the big time frame is breaking, okay? So one, one, uh, over here, uh, for some of you traders that are seeing what this is, this is market profile. We do use this to get a gauge in the market. Um, very simply, if you're above the volume profile, the red, and we close above it by two candles, the market should have a blow up, a blow off rally. If we're below the green, we sh uh, two candle close, we should have a blow off sell off. Uh, the middle blue, uh, is the thick blue is the control point. Most volume is traded. If you're below it, you are bias short. If you're above it, you're bias long. The other blue line is called the VWAP. Uh, if we're below it, we're bias short. That just helps you out. I, I have it small over here, market profile. I have it small because it gets your mind right on these charts. If I'm below low value area, which I am now, then you're, it's conducive to selling short right here. We're conducive to selling short. We want this eight, uh, this, these zones to turn red, and we want to start taking short arrows um, as long as I stay below low value area. Now, if I get inside low value area, the big, thick green line, then uh, it likes to come back up to the VWAP. It likes to come back up to the control point. Then you'll want to see green uh, zones that form, and you want to start buying. All right. So the far left chart, then, what we have is we have, uh, uh, this is very simple, is that if you turn all six green, all six red, it just means there's momentum in the market. Uh, that's just telling you it gets your mind right. Once, let, let me blow it up, and I'll show you. This is very simple to see. If I get six if all three of my zones, here's my outer zone, and I love the outer zone, I'm telling you. It's just, the traders always email me outside the room, inside the room. I was like, this thing is remarkable for calling V tops and V bottoms. And it is. Yesterday, I called the exact swing high on a sell imbalance. That's when we got that huge sell imbalance. Remember that right here? Sell imbalance. Um, and we got cranking to the downside. But what you want to do is you'll want to see these three zones all turn red together. A zone is comprised of two lines. So you'll want to see the outer zone, the intermediate zone, the shallow zone, all print the same dots together. If you see that, get ready for speed in the market to the downside or upside. And what you want to do is you want to try to catch the counter trend traders or rolling position traders. And how we do that 
is we do it by my imbalances, my speed bars. So if you are red here, you're red. If you want to see the first green bars print against, oh, this is counter trend traders getting caught. And you want to see an FZR arrow form right there. That is your biggest inflection point of the day. It called it yesterday right to the T. The next one came up here. Got your first move down there, and I caught a huge one here also. Green bars formed, came right to my middle zone, and just cranked down. But you'll notice the outer zone, it, as long as that outer zone doesn't break, trend's down. And trend was down all day. See how it's down? And look at my other sell imbalance right here. Sell imbalance, green, called the high. This algorithm is notorious for calling these swings. And then we got what? We got a trend change finally at midnight last night. So if you were buying the market yesterday after 10 o'clock, you were totally wrong. You're against the trend, the push is down. Sell and bounce, sell and bounce, sell and bounce, sell and bounce. This momentum chart told you to stick to that side. All right? And green upside the other way. So this morning we have what? We had what? We've had buy imbalance in the middle zone, buy imbalance in the middle zone, buy imbalance in the middle zone, right? So now the market is what? It's breaking down. We're sort of forming red bars. So as soon as I get six that come together, which is trying to do, looks like we're trying to sell off, all right? So I leave this chart over here to let you know when it first turns six green or six red. It just tells you a heads up. We're looking for a move to the downside. We're looking for a move. So right now, as far as the market is concerned, our larger time frame suggesting lower, our market profile suggesting lower, and we're su suggesting low over here. So <clears throat> once I get through 60, I want to look for some sell setups. 60, break 60, <clears throat> going into <clears throat> the New York Open. If I get through 60, I'm looking for 51 a quarter. If I break 51 a quarter, good night. This thing stick a fork in the S&P. You're probably going to see the market move quite considerably, and then we should see some nice FZR arrows form and so on. We should start seeing these uh, these markets print lower. 